So, folks, attention span here. Christina, here. Brooke, here. Okay? Leave quietly, please. Lesson seven, the binomial probability distribution. This is a special probability distribution, but it's really useful. It shows up all over the place, and so it's really, really handy. And we're going to start out using a tree, and then we're going to try and generalize. So here's the question I asked. I said, let's investigate what's the probability of correctly guessing the outcome in exactly two out of three rolls of a die. So let's suppose you roll a dice three times, but each time before you roll it, you try and guess what the number is going to be. What's the probability you get exactly two out of three right? We're going to model that. We're going to look for a pattern. Now, because it's three rolls, I'm going to use a tree, but we're going to try and generalize it so that I can say, hey, what if you were rolling the dice 10 times and you wanted to know what are the odds of you guessing seven right? You don't want to do a 10-level tree. Blech. So as a probability tree, I said uh, correct, not correct on the first one, correct, not correct on the second roll, correct, not correct on the third roll. I think, Brooke, you'll agree I've covered every possibility. You can be right or wrong if you're trying to guess. So in a die, suppose I said guess the number. On one roll, what are the odds, what's the probability that you guess correctly? What are your chances of guessing right? You all know the answer? Yeah, one out of six. So on the branch, then, we could say this. The probability of being correct, one out of six. What's the probability of being wrong? Sorry? Five out of six. And dice are independent. On the next level, it doesn't matter whether you guessed wrong or right. What's the probability that you guessed the next time right? Still. One out of six, five out of six, one out of six, five out of six. And again, dice are independent, and that's going to be one of the keys. We can only use this shortcut when we're talking about independent events, when we know the odds don't change, which means we can't use them for card questions, because on card questions, every time you move down a level, you had one less card, and so the fractions changed. It's going to be one out of six. Five out of six, one out of six, five out of six, one out of six, five out of six, one out of six, five out of six. We've got our tree set up, Jake. It's in your way. I want to find the probability of exactly two correct guesses in three rolls. First of all, let's put a check mark underneath each branch that has exactly two C's. Does the first branch have two C's? No, it's got three. What about the second branch? Yes. Yes. No. Yes. No. 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 It looks like I have this, one out of six, one out of six, five out of six. That's the first branch. Or one out of six, five out of six, one out of six. That's the second branch. Or what's the third branch? Five out of six, one out of six, one out of six. First thing, what do you notice about each of those three terms? What do you notice about the fractions in them? They are what? The same. I get the same, a different order, but the same pattern. So I wrote down here, actually, we can think of this in a different way. We can think of this as the product of the number of pathways that have two C's times the probability of a specific pathway with two Cs. Say what? We can think of this as follows. We can say, if you want to guess two right, how many are you also automatically guessing wrong? One. You can think about this as saying, look, I'm going to guess two right. I'm going to guess one wrong. Now, normally, I don't put a one as an exponent, but I'm putting it there so you can see that's what I was thinking. 
And then what you have to do is you have to somehow figure out how many different pathways have that combination. Now we counted, how many pathways have that combination? Three. Um, I wonder if there is some way that I could generate that number three without actually drawing the tree. Because then all I need to do is visualize how many correct, how many wrong. That I can do in my head. All I need to do is get how many terms there are. Got your calculators out? Hey, what's three choose two? <gasps> what? Sorry, what, what, what? So I'm going to give you a completely different way to think about this question. Kayvon, can you read to me what I wrote next to A, please, nice and loud? Oh, uh, what is the probability of getting, oh, of correctly getting, oh, shit. Um. Language? <laughs> Thanks for sticking around at lunch. I picked on you. Start over. Read to me, my friend. Go. What is the probability of correctly guessing the outcome in exactly two out of three? Stop. In exactly what? Two out of three. Stop. In exactly what? Read the thing again. Uh, one more time. I'm emphasizing this. In exactly what? Can you see where those numbers might appear? From three guesses, choose how many correct? Two. What are the odds of getting one correct? What are the odds of getting one correct? When you're rolling a dice, what are the odds of guessing correctly? One out of six. How many correct do I want to get? Two. Two. What are the odds of getting it wrong when you're guessing on a die? Five out of six. How many wrong do I want to get? One. See how all those numbers appear? This is called the binomial probability distribution. By the way, let's actually crunch the numbers. So if I want to do this using a shortcut, I can go as follows. I can go 1 out of 6, 1 out of 6 times 5 out of 6. I can go, hey, Mr. Duick, it's 3 times 1 sixth squared times 5 sixth squared. And that 3 actually came from, from 3 guesses, choose 2 correct. Put the phone away for the rest of class, my friend, who already said bad words and is in my bad books. I would power it off. And I get that. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. I get that. Normally, I wouldn't type that to the one, but just so you can see how it all fits in. I get 0 0.0694. 6.9%. You know what? If you're rolling three times in a row, the odds of you guessing exactly two correct, not good. But the nice thing is, we can now take this method, Jacob, and we can generalize it. So then I said for part B, what's the probability of correctly guessing the outcome in two out of six rolls? How many rolls? Six. If I was doing a tree, how many levels would that tree have? Six. Ugh. Like, it would be huge. Wait a minute, wait a minute. How many rolls? <laughs> Choose. How many correct do I want? What are the odds of getting it correct on one guess? What's the probability of guessing a dice correctly on one roll? How many correct do I want, Jacob? What's the probability that I get it wrong? How many wrong guesses do I want to get? Hey, crunch the numbers, please. What is the probability that if you roll a die six times that you guess exactly two correct? And you don't yet realize how useful this is because we can turn, much like in the last unit, we turned a lot of questions into words. We can turn a lot of probability situations into a binomial probability distribution. You get six, uh, option, or arrow. Six, choose two. 
one sixth squared one oh that's not what I want si uh, not what I want five five sixth to the fourth do you get uh, as a fraction or as a decimal point two zero zero nine Right next to the calculator, uh, right next to the fraction button, F arrow D stands for fraction to decimal. Okay? These, are, these calculators are well set up. They're really nice. Is that okay? We can use this for any type of probability situation where the odds don't change from round to round. The fancy word for that is any type of probability situation that's independent. What are some examples of independent? Flipping a coin is independent. Rolling a die is independent. Ooh, and lots more. Using the same logic, what's the probability of exactly x correct guesses in six rolls? How many rolls? If you want to generalize, for six rolls, it would be six choose x. Six, if you want three correct guesses, it would be six choose three. If you want five correct guesses, it would be six choose five. What's the probability of guessing correct on one? And you want x correct, four correct, two correct, three, whatever, that number goes there. Probability of getting it wrong. How many wrongs do you want to get? Algebraically. Six take away x. So if x is two, six take away two. You want a four there. If you want five right, you want one wrong. So we can do some fairly quick number crunching, I think, if you get your calculators out. Now, if you already typed this last one in, we probably just need to do a little bit of modifying, because this next one says the probability of getting exactly six correct guesses in six rolls. Now, what do you think the odds, the probability is of guessing six times in a row correctly? High or small? Okay, I'm going to expect a small answer. Algebraically, it would be this. How many guess, how many rolls? Six. Choose, how many do you want correct? Six. What's the probability of getting correct? How many do you want correct? What's the probability of getting it wrong? Five out of six. How many do you want to get wrong? Zero. Pardon me? Uh, anything to the zero is one, not zero. So it doesn't cancel. You're not going to get a zero as an answer. And you know what? I'm going to just, because I have this actually typed in, I think, actually, Jordan, I can just kind of backspace and do a little editing. Can I not? I'm going to change the two to a six, right? I'm going to change this squared here to the power of six. And I'm going to change this 4 here to the power of 0. As a fraction, I get that. Or as a decimal, well, as a fraction, 1 in 46,656 probability. Is that okay, Silka? Christina, is that okay? Okay. Let's skip five correct. Let's do four correct. So what's the probability of getting exactly four correct? Christina, how many rolls are we doing grand total? So it's going to be six. Choose. How many correct do we want? What's the odds of getting it correct on any one guess? What's the probability of getting it correct any time? How many correct do we want? Four. What's the probability of getting it wrong? 
How many wrongs do we want if we want four correct? Two. Yep. Which is what? Give it to me as a decimal. I get in scientific notation 8.03 times well, 8.04 times 10 to negative 3. I get 0 0.00804. Not very likely of guessing correct. But you have the setup? Okay. I'm not going to do every one of these. We're going to skip a little bit and see if we can generalize. By the way, what's the relationship between these probabilities and the binomial theorem? Remember the binomial expansion theorem where we said, oh, what's the bracket? Six, and then it was six choose six. Six right, none wrong. Or six choose five, five right, one wrong. It turns out what you're doing with the binomial probability distribution, it's actually the same coefficients and the same exponents from FOIL which actually was uh, from Pascal's triangle way back when. So the reason this is called the binomial probability distribution is it actually kind of sort of follows the same pattern as if you were saying, there's the probability of getting it right. There's the probability of getting it wrong. How many times are you guessing? Foil it out, and the numbers plug in there. And don't freak out if you're not quite sure on that. What we need to be able to do is actually apply the formula, turn the page. Example one. A biased, a rigged coin is flipped four times. Now, normally, there's a 50% chance of a coin coming up heads, but this one is a biased coin. It's a rigged coin, so there's a 70% chance of it coming up heads. Yeah, wait it when you cast it. Oh, they manufacture them. You can find them online somewhere. Yeah. People who want to cheat at stuff? Absolutely. No, no. Also, dice, they make weighted dice. Vegas has a, a very, very rigorous screening policy. So their dice all have to come from, I think, two or three companies supply them all, and they all come pre-wrapped in a security seal, a bunch of stuff. Otherwise, you could introduce a weighted set of dice, and that would really skew the results. Yep. So we're OK? Yeah. OK. So we have a coin, and this <coughs> biased coin, this illegal coin, apparently heads comes up 70% of the time. So you flip it four times. What's the probability that you get exactly four heads? Hmm. How many times are you flipping it? Choose. How many times do you want to be correct in this particular example A? How many heads do you want? Four. Four. What's the probability of getting heads? How many heads do we want? What's the probability of getting tails? Think about it. 0.3. How many tails do we want? If you were betting, what's the probability that you'll get four heads in a row with this rigged coin? I didn't really need to type the to the power zero, but I noticed that there's more questions, so I plugged in every number that I could so I can just go backspace and edit. Uh, oh, math error. What did I get a math error for? 
Uh, it's saying right there. It wants a times there. Okay. Do you get 0 0.2401? about a 24% chance that you get four consecutive heads. Not a great chance, but better than if it was a non-rigged coin. What about exactly two heads? Now, if it was a standard coin with a 50-50 chance, you would expect that most of the time, if you flip it four times, you'll probably get two heads and two tails most of the time. So this is where we might find the odds get skewed. Let's see. How many times are we flipping the coin? Four. Choose. How many correct do we want? Two. What's the probability of correct or of a heads? 0.7. Two of those. You got a 0.3 chance, percent chance, a 0.3, a 30% chance of being wrong. You want two of those. Two of those, two of those, two. You get 0.2646. The third one. What's this one asking? Sean, can you read to me this third one? Probability of what? Stop. That's going to be important. You know what? Let's underline that. Keep going. Three heads in four flips. What does at least three heads mean? Did you say the word or? So let's write down here three or four, but when we start doing the actual calculations, what will we replace the word or with? What does or mean? There's going to be a plus sign. Now, four I already did up here. Yes? So I'm just going to drop the point two, four, oh, one. Yay. Three is going to be four flips, choose three. Point seven, three of them. Point three, one of them. I think I can just backspace and quickly crunch that. One, three, three. Three out of four correct. Point seven to the power of three correct. 0.3 to the power of 1 wrong. That looks good. So I get 0 0.411, so 0 0.4116 plus 0 0.2401. 0 0.6517? 0 0.6517. Yep. Can you read to me this line right here? What does or mean? Add, okay. And then four out of four, we actually calculated that one up in this line right here. So rather than recalculate it, we already calculated four out of, this is the four out of four. We just dropped it down right there. And then we said all I need, really need to calculate is three out of four, and then add them together. Is that okay?